Hi, in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at some of the new adjustment layer nodes that come with the Mario Extension Pack 4. It won't be too much of an in-depth tutorial, I'm just kind of give you a very quick overview over the nodes and what they do. Let's head to the Extension Pack section of the adjustment layer nodes and create the first new node, which is the Gradient Map. The Gradient Map is a substitute for Mario's lack of proper ramp nodes. You probably all are familiar with a standard ramp node. For example, here we have the default Maya ramp and you can add color bands here and move them around to kind of contrast things up. The gradient map acts exactly the same way, just without the nice ramp interface. So we kind of have to work around that a little bit. So you can add color bands. And by default, we have th the first three active. We can add more. So for example, now I have four active. So the color four is evaluated as well. And I can change the position of each band. So this would be equal to moving a color band in a ramp interface to the left or to the right, depending. We have some basic interpolation, so the linear and smooth, as well as flat, which will remove any kind of transition between the values and make it a very hard edged remap. Next up, we have the replace color node. The replace color node, as the node name implies, will replace one color with another. So I'm going to pick my source color. And I'm going to first adjust my fine threshold. We have two threshold sliders here, the fine and the large threshold. The fine one will kind of give you very detailed control over the fringe areas of a color, while the large one will kind of brute force it. And at one point, it'll even go into neighboring colors. We can pick a target color and you can see we've replaced one color with another. We have a little preview option up at the top. This is taken from the color range to mask node, which is also an extension pack node. It'll simply allow you to do a, a wipe between the before and after, which is also helpful if you need to make a modification of your source color. Otherwise, you would need to change or hide the, the uh, node in order to see the result and repick colors. And this way, you can simply use the um, wipe and pick a new color easily. For example, if I just want to take the green one instead, you know, you can see now I've picked another color easily. And here is the result. Up next, we have the maximize value node. The maximize value node will max out the values of your colors. As you can see, we have a very vibrant result now compared to the previous sort of dull and dark result. We have two different methods to achieve this, the corrected method, which will basically set the values to one and the maximum value method, which will take the maximum value between the red, green and blue channel for each pixel and use that as an offset. Now you might ask yourself where this node would be useful. It is especially useful in offline rendering. So for example, if you're having a map, for example, or a value from the internet that was authored for a metal roughness workflow, so a game workflow. Metal roughness workflows encompass a reflectance value and a specular color value, both in the albedo for any metals. So you basically don't have a specific specular color. Now, if you were to use these values straight up in your offline rendering, for example, for a specular color, you would artificially dim down your specular. So you would break energy conservation of your shaders. By utilizing a maximized values, using the result in the specular color, your specular colors will not be dimmed down, but will be at full value. However, they will still have the correct specular color. So this is where this can come in handy. Next up, let's take a look at the swizzle node. The swizzle node is under the utilities here, and it's basically a modification of an existing Mari node, which is the shuffle node. So let me create a shuffle node as well. And let's take a look at what makes it different. So we have the shuffle node, which allows you to map the individual color channels to a different color channels. So for example, we could take the green channel and map it to the red channel, etc. Now the swizzle node allows you to do exactly the same thing. However, it also allows you to set a channel to black zero or white one. This is something you might have already seen in other areas of Mari, for example, under the advanced blending options, we have some swizzle options down here. And basically the swizzle node is the node version of these advanced blend node options. Next up, we have some additions to the histogram sections. Mar extension pack three introduced the histogram scan node. And now we also have a histogram range and shift node. If you're familiar with Substance Designer or Substance Painter, you'll feel right at home with these nodes because they're exact replicas or rebuilds of these nodes. So the histogram range will allow you to shift the range and position of the histogram. And the histogram shift will allow you to shift the position. And again, the values are one-to-one -one 
parity with Substance Designer and Substance Painter, so if you're used to them, you should feel right at home there. The next section of this tutorial is going to deal with conversion between different specular standards. So in our extension pack section, we have a new specular subsection. And in here, a bunch of nodes that are all used to convert between different specular standards. So we have the IOR terms, reflectance terms, and specular level. Now on this shader ball, I'm using an AI standard shader, which is actually part of the old R04 shader. So now with R05, we have a different one. And the old AI standard shader uses reflectance values. So for example, here we have the reflectance at normal for specular and reflectance at normal for the reflection. Now, if you're looking up values on the internet, sometimes you might find a reflectance value and sometimes you might find an IOR value. So for example, here on the site, refractiveindex.info, I have a plastic selected and I have a refractive index value of 1.490.6. However, Arnold expects it to be a reflectance value, so not an IOR value. So let me create the IOR to reflectance node. And this node would convert any IOR value to a proper reflectance value. Other than a lot of other adjustment nodes, these ones also allow you to manually input the values. So down here, I have a manual input checkbox and I can set an IOR value just in this input field. So let me transfer this 1.490.6 value into my IOR value. You actually will see that I don't have enough slider position here, so I only have three decimals. So I'm just gonna go to the preferences, miscellaneous, scroll down and increase my slider position. So now I have four. So now I have converted my IOR value to a correct reflectance value. We can double check this. I'm just gonna go to a flat mode, bring up my color picker and sample the value. And now I have a value of 0.0388. If I go back to this page and scroll down a little bit, you can see I have a reflectance value for this material as well, which is the 0.0388. So you can see the conversion was successful and is correct. Vice versa, you can convert back to a IOR value. So you can create the reflectance to IOR node. I'm gonna not do a manual input, but I wanna convert back to the original one. So I'm just gonna leave this unchecked. Make sure I'm HDR mode and bring up my color picker again. Pick the raw pixels and click on it. And now I have my original IOR value of 1.4902 back. Next up, let's look at specular level maps. Specular level maps are a recent addition because they come from a game PBR workflow. So it's not really something anyone in an offline rendering workflow would usually have contact with. However, especially with the rise of the whole substance tool set, it's going to be more and more common to also have to deal with some specular level maps because if you're authoring things in substance, you're authoring them oftentimes using game workflows. So let's quickly look at what specular level maps are. Here in Mari, for example, I have my Unreal shader and in here I have a specular slot. Now the Unreal shader uses a metallic slot in order to determine which areas of your metal of your material are a metal or a dielectric material. For dielectric materials, usually we are dealing with reflectance values between 0 and 0 0.08. So a maximum of 8% reflectance for your entire material. Now in order to not having to author a material with very low values, as you can see here, for example, we have the entire range for dielectric materials between 0 and 0 0.08. So this would be very hard to actually paint. So what they've done is they've remapped the entire range of 0 to 0 0.08 to a full 0 to 1. So for example here, a 4% reflectance would equal a 0 0.5 value in a specular level map. If we take a look at the Unreal Engine documentation, we can see under the specular section, we have some measured materials, for example, for glass 0 0.5, ice 0 0.224, etc. Now in here, I have my specular level value of 0 0.5, meaning it would be equal to plastic or glass. But if I want to convert this for use, for example, in another shader in offline rendering, I would need to convert this to something I can use. So in this case, for example, I would create a specular level to IOR node. And if I just view this thing flat, again, make sure I'm in HDR mode and color pick the value, the resulting value. I would now have a IOR value of 1.5, which is equal to plastic or glass in this case. Now vice versa, you might have only a IOR value at hand and you need to convert this to a specular level map. So if I go back to my Unreal shader, 
and I'm creating a IOR to spec 11 node. You can see in here, I can set my IOR value and I would get the corresponding specular level out of it. Now there's currently no specular level to reflectance node. So you would need to first convert your specular level to an IOR and from the resulting IOR convert it to a reflectance value using the IOR, uh, using the IOR to reflectance. So this covers the changes and additions in the Mari extension pack for adjustment layer sections and I hope it's useful.